The 1970s were a unique time, known for its colorful fashion, funky music, and cool gadgets. If you lived through it, you might feel a mix of emotions when you think back on it. Homes in the 1970s were decked out in wild colors like avocado green and orange. People loved their shag carpets and trippy wallpaper. It might seem outdated now, but back then, it was the height of style. Families spent a lot of time together, watching TV shows and playing board games. It was a time for bonding and having fun together. Technology was also taking off in the 1970s. Personal computers and video games were just starting to become popular. Even though they were basic compared to today's gadgets, they were super exciting back then. And let's not forget about the toys. Kids had a blast with classics like Barbie dolls, Hot Wheels cars, and the Rubik's Cube. Thinking back on the 1970s brings back memories of simpler times and lots of fun. Even though things have changed since then, those memories still make us smile. Number one, lots of wood paneling in home decor. Once upon a time, wood paneling was all the rage in American homes. You could find it in almost every household, sold at affordable prices ranging from $2 to $1.8 per panel. Fast forward to today, and the value of wood paneling has skyrocketed to $1.12 to $1.40 per panel. But despite its former popularity, it's now often considered a drawback to a home's overall aesthetic and market value. This shift in perception has led to a plethora of guides and tutorials on how to hide or disguise this once beloved decor. Back in its heyday, wood paneling was the go-to choice for homeowners looking to add a touch of warmth and character to their interiors. It was available in various styles and finishes with a glossy sheen that mimicked the look of more expensive materials. This glossy finish was a hallmark of the era, evoking a sense of luxury and sophistication. However, as tastes and design trends evolved, the glossy finish of wood paneling fell out of favor. Many homeowners now view it as outdated and out of sync with modern interior aesthetics. As a result, there's been a surge in interest in ways to update or conceal wood paneling to achieve a more contemporary look. One of the main challenges in updating wood paneling lies in its glossy surface. Unlike flat or matte finishes, glossy surfaces can be tricky to paint over effectively. Proper preparation is crucial to ensure that primer and paint adhere properly and produce a smooth, uniform finish. This often involves extensive sanding to roughen up the surface and create a better bonding surface for the paint. Sanding not only helps to remove the glossy finish, but also smooths out any imperfections or rough spots in the wood paneling. It's a time-consuming process, but one that is necessary for achieving professional-looking results. In addition to sanding, proper priming is essential when painting over wood paneling. A high-quality primer helps to seal the surface and provides a smooth base for the paint to adhere to. It also helps to prevent any knots or imperfections in the wood from bleeding through the paint. Once the surface has been properly prepped and primed, it's time to apply the paint. Choosing the right paint color and finish is key to achieving the desired look and feel for the space. Many homeowners opt for neutral tones or light colors to brighten up the room and create a more modern, airy feel. Number two, eight track tapes. During the 1970s, the music scene was alive with the sounds of iconic brands like Pioneer, Sony, and Panasonic introducing the revolutionary eight track tape player. Priced at around $1.30, these devices became synonymous with audio entertainment, dominating the market from the mid 60s to the early 80s until the advent of CDs and later digital music players rendered them obsolete. I find it fascinating how these magnetic tape recording devices, once considered cutting edge technology, have now become relics of a bygone era. Back then, you could find them gracing the shelves of stores like Radio Shack and even being offered as optional upgrades in Ford dealerships. It's incredible to think how they represented a significant chapter in the evolution of music technology. The automotive industry played a pivotal role in popularizing eight track tape players, particularly through Ford's groundbreaking move in 1965. 
by offering factory or dealer installed eight tracks in cars, Ford revolutionized in-car entertainment, forever changing how people experience music on the road. It wasn't long before other car manufacturers followed suit, further cementing the eight tracks place in automotive history. By 1966, these devices had also made their way into people's homes, providing unparalleled convenience and portability. Suddenly, music lovers could enjoy their favorite tunes anywhere, whether they were on a road trip or relaxing at home. It's incredible how these seemingly simple gadgets transformed the way we consumed music, giving rise to a whole new era of audio enjoyment. Today, 8-track tapes hold a nostalgic charm for many collectors and enthusiasts. While their value may vary between $5 to $1.20 per lot, their true worth lies in the memories they evoke and the cultural significance they represent. Holding an 8-track tape in your hands is like holding a piece of music history, a tangible reminder of a time when music was experienced in a different, more tactile way. Number three, electric fondue sets. Electric fondue sets, once a staple of dinner parties and gatherings, have maintained their allure over the years. What was once a budget-friendly item available for $20.30 at popular retailers like Bed Bath & Beyond and Macy's has now seen a slight increase in value with prices ranging from $20.40. Despite this shift, electric fondue kits continue to hold their charm and remain a symbol of culinary nostalgia particularly associated with the vibrant dining scene of the 1970s. In the heyday of fondue, electric pots took center stage on dining tables, offering a versatile way to enjoy melted cheese, chocolate, and a variety of meats. These pots were not just utensils, they were catalysts for social interaction, fostering memorable moments and lively conversations among friends and family. While culinary trends have come and gone, cheese and chocolate fondue have stood the test of time, retaining their status as beloved classics. The appeal of cheese fondue in particular can be attributed to clever marketing campaigns that romanticize cheese as a symbol of rustic simplicity, evoking images of cozy evenings in the Swiss Alps. This nostalgic association with fondue has contributed to its enduring popularity transcending generations and culinary fads. Moreover, electric fondue sets offer a convenient and hassle-free way to indulge in the rich, creamy goodness of melted cheese or chocolate. Unlike traditional fondue pots, which require careful monitoring over an open flame, electric versions provide a controlled heat source, ensuring consistent melting without the risk of scorching or uneven cooking. Beyond their practical utility, electric fondue sets evoke a sense of communal dining and shared experiences. The act of dipping and sharing food around a bubbling pot fosters a sense of camaraderie and conviviality, creating moments of connection that linger in memory long after the last morsel has been enjoyed. Number four, the Presto Hot Dogger. This seemingly unassuming appliance revolutionized the art of hot dog cooking departing from traditional methods like grilling or boiling and instead harnessing the power of electricity. Imagine the scene, families gathered in their kitchens, eagerly anticipating the arrival of a new era in hot dog preparation. With the Presto Hot Dogger at their disposal, they could now enjoy perfectly cooked hot dogs in a fraction of the time previously required. No more waiting for water to boil or tending to a grill, this gadget promised convenience and efficiency like never before. At its core, the Presto Hot Dogger embodied the spirit of innovation that defined the 1970s. In an era marked by rapid technological advancements and a hunger for the novel, this quirky kitchen appliance stood out as a shining example of ingenuity. Its ability to cook up to six hot dogs in just 60 seconds using electric currents was nothing short of groundbreaking. Yet, what truly set the Presto Hot Dogger apart was not just its functionality, but its ability to evoke a sense of nostalgia and whimsy. It became a staple in department stores, its bright colors and sleek design drawing in customers seeking a taste of the future. For many, 
It represented more than just a kitchen gadget. It was a symbol of an era defined by optimism and experimentation. Of course, the idea of cooking hot dogs with electricity may seem unconventional to some. However, according to anecdotes shared on various online forums, those who dared to try the Presto hot dogger were pleasantly surprised by the results. Despite being electrocuted, these hot dogs purportedly retained their flavor and juiciness, rivaling those cooked through more traditional means. Number five, Pet Rocks. The rise and fall of Pet Rocks in 1975 remains a fascinating chapter in American pop culture history. It's incredible to think that what started as a simple idea, selling rocks as pets, could become such a massive craze. Gary Dahl's marketing prowess certainly played a pivotal role in turning these ordinary stones into must-have commodities, fetching a staggering dollar sixty each today. Reflecting on the phenomenon, it's intriguing how something so seemingly mundane captured the imagination of millions. The concept of owning a pet rock, devoid of any practical purpose, yet brimming with novelty, tapped into a collective desire for simplicity and whimsy. People were willing to shell out money for a rock simply because it came packaged with a cleverly crafted backstory and a sense of irony. The meteoric rise of pet rocks reaching its zenith during the 1975 Christmas season underscores the power of effective marketing and societal trends. It's remarkable how a fad can sweep through culture like wildfire, captivating the public's attention and prompting widespread participation. For a brief period, owning a pet rock became a badge of cultural relevance, a quirky statement that transcended its material form. However, like all fads, the pet rock craze eventually waned, fading into obscurity after six months. The fleeting nature of its popularity serves as a reminder of the cyclical nature of trends and the ephemeral nature of consumer interests. Yet, despite its short-lived reign, the impact of Pet Rocks on Gary Dahl's life was profound. Overnight, he transformed from a relatively unknown entrepreneur to a millionaire, thanks to his ingenuity and timing. In hindsight, Dahl's ambivalence towards his creation is understandable. While the Pet Rock brought him wealth and recognition, it also carried a sense of regret. It's easy to see how Dahl might have grappled with the paradox of creating something iconic yet trivial something that would forever be associated with his name, but also viewed with a hint of amusement. Number six, TV dinners. In the mid 20th century, TV dinners became emblematic of American dining culture, celebrated for their affordability and convenience. Despite modern criticisms regarding their high sodium content from the 1950s through the 1980s, they were devoured with enthusiasm across the nation. Swanson's introduction of the TV dinner in 1953 marked a pivotal moment in meal preparation. Almost overnight, these neatly compartmentalized trays became a household staple, selling millions and revolutionizing the way families approached mealtime. The convenience they offered, coupled with their novelty, captured the imaginations of consumers, making them an instant hit. As the 60s and 70s unfolded, the popularity of TV dinners soared. Busy households embrace them as a quick and hassle-free solution to mealtime dilemmas, and they became synonymous with modern living. The 1980s brought another significant development with Campbell's introduction of microwavable trays, which further streamlined the reheating process and cemented TV dinner status as a go-to meal option. Despite evolving dietary trends and an increased awareness of health concerns, Frozen dinners, in some iteration, continue to hold a prominent place in today's culinary landscape. While their sodium content and processed nature are often criticized, they persist as a convenient solution for individuals and families juggling hectic schedules. For many, the appeal of TV dinners lies not only in their convenience, but also in the nostalgia they evoke. They represent a simpler time a glimpse into the past 
when gathering around the television with a tray of neatly arranged food was a cherished ritual. Even as culinary tastes evolve and consumers prioritize fresher, healthier options, there remains a place in the modern pantry for these frozen relics of bygone eras. Number seven, conversation pits. Back in the 1960s, sunken living rooms, also affectionately known as conversation pits, were all the rage in American homes. They embodied an era of casual elegance and fostered an atmosphere of relaxation and togetherness. While their popularity has waned over the years, there's a subtle resurgence of interest in these retro havens of comfort and camaraderie. When you think about it, it's not all that surprising. In a world that often feels hectic and disconnected, there's a certain allure to the idea of creating a cozy, intimate space where meaningful conversations can unfold. The nostalgia associated with conversation pits taps into a longing for simpler times when gathering with loved ones meant truly connecting without the distractions of modern technology. These sunken living rooms were more than just architectural novelties. They were the heart of the home. Picture it, sinking into plush cushions, surrounded by friends and family, with the warm glow of a fireplace casting a comforting light. It was a sanctuary from the outside world, a place where laughter echoed and bonds were strengthened. What made Conversation Pit so special was their ability to bring people together. In an age where social interactions often take place through screens, there's something incredibly refreshing about the idea of reclaiming face-to-face -face communication in a cozy, inviting setting. It's about creating moments that are genuine and unforgettable where the art of conversation takes center stage. Moreover, conversation pits were a testament to the value placed on shared experiences. In a fast-paced society that prioritizes individual pursuits, these sunken living rooms served as a reminder of the importance of community and connection. They encourage us to slow down, savor the moment, and cherish the company of those we hold dear. While the heyday of conversation pits may have passed, their timeless appeal endures. The resurgence of interest in these retro features speaks to a desire for authenticity and meaningful interaction in an increasingly digital world. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest pleasures are the most profound. Number eight, egg chairs. The ball chair, a quintessential piece of space age design, has quite the history. Originally priced at a hefty $1.900 when it first hit the market at Arneo Originals, it's now valued at a staggering $12,400. That's quite the leap. It made its debut back in 1963 and really stole the show at the 1966 Cologne Furniture Fair. What's fascinating is how this finished creation skyrocketed to fame, not just in the world of furniture, but also on the silver screen and in music videos during the 70s. It seemed to embody this futuristic avant-garde vibe that captivated people's imaginations. Its sleek, spherical design and cozy interior created this otherworldly appeal that just resonated with folks. Of course, not everyone could shell out the big bucks for the original ball chair. That's where the replicas came in. With demand soaring for those egg and ball-shaped chairs, manufacturers churned out more affordable versions, making this iconic design accessible to a broader audience. It's like with any trend, right? Once something catches on, everyone wants a piece of it. What's interesting is how these chairs became not just pieces of furniture, but symbols of an era. They were everywhere. It's like they represented this cultural shift towards embracing bold, unconventional designs. People wanted to inject a bit of that space age flair into their homes, and what better way to do it than with a funky, futuristic chair? Looking back, it's clear that the popularity of egg and ball-shaped chairs wasn't just a passing fad. It spoke to something deeper in our collective psyche. Maybe it was this longing for adventure, for something beyond the ordinary. Or perhaps it was just a desire to shake things up, to break free from the traditional and embrace the new and exciting. And 
Number nine, Atari consoles. Every kid dreamed of finding one under the Christmas tree and owning an Atari console became a badge of honor. Atari wasn't just a gaming console, it was a gateway to a new era of entertainment, bringing the excitement of arcades right into our living rooms. With its simple yet addictive games like Pong and Space Invaders, Atari sparked the imaginations of millions and laid the foundation for what we now know as the gaming industry. However, despite its initial success, Atari's journey was far from smooth sailing. Faced with fierce competition and internal struggles, the company began to falter. Poor management decisions and a failure to adapt to changing market dynamics spelled trouble for the once mighty Atari. One of the critical missteps was Atari's approach to game development. As other companies began producing more complex and visually appealing games, Atari stuck to its tried and tested formula. While classics like Pac-Man and Asteroids were hits, they couldn't compete with the innovation seen in games from competitors like Nintendo and Sega. The decline of Atari wasn't just a business story, it was a cultural shift. For a generation of gamers, Atari represented more than just a console. It was a symbol of childhood memories and shared experiences. The demise of Atari Inc. marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy that continues to influence the gaming industry today. Number 10, Evolution of Telephones. The evolution of telephones over the decades is nothing short of remarkable. Looking back to the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s, one can't help but reminisce about the iconic wall phones that adorned nearly every household. Mounted securely on walls, these telephones were characterized by their sturdy build and long cords connecting the handset to the base. They were the epitome of reliability and served as the primary means of communication for millions of people worldwide. Fast forward to the present day, and the landscape of telecommunication has undergone a dramatic transformation. The once ubiquitous wall phones have been replaced by sleek and sophisticated smartphones, capable of performing a myriad of functions beyond simple voice calls. The shift from clunky, stationary devices to portable, multifunctional gadgets represents a monumental leap in both convenience and design. One cannot discuss the evolution of telephones without mentioning Motorola, a pioneer in phone technology during its heyday. In the early 1970s, Motorola made history with the introduction of the first portable phone. While the device was bulky and far from the compact smartphones we know today, its significance cannot be overstated. It laid the groundwork for the mobile revolution that would follow, marking a paradigm shift in how we perceive and utilize telecommunication devices. Despite the groundbreaking advancements in phone technology, many people still harbored a sense of nostalgia for the traditional wall phones of yesteryear. These sturdy devices with their unmistakable ringtones and tactile buttons held a special place in the hearts of those who grew up with them. There was a certain charm in the simplicity of dialing a number and hearing the familiar click of the rotary dial. In retrospect, the evolution of telephones is not just a tale of technological progress, but also a reflection of societal changes and shifting consumer preferences. The transition from wall phones to smartphones represents more than just an upgrade in hardware. It symbolizes the ever-increasing interconnectedness of the modern world and our insatiable appetite for innovation. Number 11, wood paneled station wagons. In the 1970s, wood paneled station wagons weren't just vehicles, they were icons of style and status. Picture it, cruising down the suburban streets, faux wood detailing gleaming in the sunlight, evoking a sense of luxury and nostalgia that was unmatched. These cars weren't just about getting from point A to point B, they were statements, symbols of a certain lifestyle and taste. Back then, if you wanted to be considered cool, you had to have one of these wood panel beauties. It wasn't just about practicality, it was about making a statement. These cars represented a fusion of function and design, 
blending the utility of a wagon with the elegance of wood paneling. And it wasn't just one model dominating the scene. There were several to choose from. The Chevy El Camino Estate, with its sleek lines and unmistakable wood detailing, exuded an air of sophistication. The Chevy Suburban, a true American classic, embodied the spirit of adventure with its rugged yet refined appearance. The Volkswagen Rabbit, with its compact size and charming design, brought a touch of European flair to the wood-paneled wagon craze. And let's not forget the Jeep Wagoneer, a true trailblazer in both off-road capability and style. These wood-paneled wonders weren't just cars, they were time machines, transporting us back to an era of bell-bottoms and disco where life seemed a little bit simpler and a lot more stylish. They were a testament to craftsmanship and attention to detail, with every inch meticulously designed to evoke a sense of timeless elegance. In a world where cars are increasingly sleek and futuristic, there's something undeniably charming about the wood panel station wagon. It's a reminder of a bygone era, when cars were more than just modes of transportation. They were expressions of personality and style. And while they may no longer dominate the roads as they once did, their legacy lives on in the hearts of enthusiasts and collectors alike. Number 12, wood frame furniture. The fascination with wood wasn't limited to just automobiles during the 1970s. It extended to home furniture as well. Back then, there was something about the warmth and authenticity of wood that captivated people's imaginations. From sleek beach to rich mahogany and sturdy oak, these wood varieties became the embodiment of the era's design ethos. Walk into any home from the 1970s and you'd find furniture proudly displaying these timeless materials, each piece exuding the unmistakable charm of the decade. When we think about vintage furniture from the 1970s, it's hard not to conjure up images of wood frame pieces, whether it's the classic armchair or the iconic coffee table, the presence of wooden frames was ubiquitous. It wasn't just about functionality. It was a statement, a reflection of the era's design predilections. Take a look at old photographs from that time and you'll instantly recognize the distinct style where every detail from the furniture to the smallest decor item tells the story of the 1970s. But what was it about wood frame furniture that made it so emblematic of the era? Perhaps it was the craftsmanship, the intricate detailing, and the skilled workmanship that went into creating each piece. Or maybe it was the sense of nostalgia it evoked, transporting people back to a simpler time when quality and durability were paramount. Whatever the reason, wood frame furniture became more than just functional pieces. They were symbols of an entire generation's tastes and preferences. And let's not forget the tactile experience of wood, the smooth grain under your fingertips, the earthy aroma that fills the room. Unlike synthetic materials, wood has a way of connecting us to nature, grounding us in a world that often feels too fast paced and disconnected. It's no wonder that even today, amidst the rise of minimalist designs and sleek modern aesthetics, there's still a demand for the warmth and authenticity that only wood can provide. Number 13, crock pots. Crock pots, those wonderful slow cookers that have become a staple in kitchens across America, have truly changed the game when it comes to cooking. Ever since their rise to prominence post World War II, these handy devices have been making life easier for busy individuals, particularly working women who face the challenge of balancing career and home life. With their widespread availability in major retailers like Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Best Buy crockpots have become an indispensable kitchen appliance for many households. The beauty of crockpots lies in their simplicity and convenience. They've earned a permanent spot on kitchen countertops since the 1970s offering a solution to the age-old problem of wanting a hot, home-cooked meal after a tiring day at work. No longer do you have to slave away in the kitchen or worry about monitoring your meal's progress. Just toss your ingredients into the crock pot in the morning, set it and forget it until dinner time. 
Brands like Cuisinart, GE, Hamilton Beach, and KitchenAid have all contributed to the popularity of slow cooking, each offering their own take on the classic crock pot design. Even though some pioneers in the industry, like American Electric and West Bend Housewares, are no longer around, their legacy lives on through the continued innovation and improvement of slow cooker technology. But beyond just being a convenient kitchen appliance, crock pots have become a symbol of comfort and tradition in many households. The aroma of a stew simmering in the crock pot all day brings back memories of family dinners and cozy Sunday afternoons. There's something deeply satisfying about coming home to the welcoming scent of a meal that's been slowly cooking to perfection while you've been away. And let's not forget the versatility of crock pots. From soups and stews to roasts and even desserts, there's almost nothing you can't make in a slow cooker. It's like having your own personal chef working tirelessly in the background, ensuring that delicious meals are always within reach, no matter how busy your schedule may be.